Hi, my name is Rebecca Malonso. I'm an extension plant pathologist with the Mississippi State University Extension Service. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the Southeast Regional Strawberry Integrated Pest Management Guide focused on plasticulture production, for which I am also the commodity editor. This guide, which I will refer to as the Strawberry IPM Guide, or the guide for short, as well as other IPM guides for blueberries, caneberries, muscadines, and bunch grapes, is updated each year by a team of university specialists. These guides are freely available on the Southern Region Small Fruit Consortium website. Simply visit smallfruit.org and click on the IPM Production Guides tab. A list of state specialists for participating states within the Southern Region Small Fruit Consortium is included in the guide. You may also find contact information for those specialists on the Small Fruit Consortium website under the Regional Experts tab. I don't have a lot of time to go through each aspect of the guide, but I want to highlight some important features today. Important information regarding pesticide emergencies, spills, stewardship and liability, as well as general information on pesticides and information on pollinator protection is provided near the beginning of the guide. Additional online resources to assist you in pest identification and management decisions are also described and linked on the mobile and online tools page. A new addition to the guide is a section on wildlife damage prevention for some of the most common nuisance wildlife for strawberry production. The main disease, insect, and weed tables are arranged by crop stage or, in the case of weeds, timing and site application. In each of these tables, the pest or problem is listed in the first column. Subsequent columns provide information on the cultural or chemical management options for that pest, including the active ingredient of the pesticide, an example trade name product containing that active ingredient, the product rate, the effectiveness of that active ingredient against the pest, the re-entry interval, the pre-harvest interval, and some additional comments for the listed cultural or chemical management option. The group or code designated for each chemical based on the mode of action of that chemical is included in the comments. Products are listed in the disease and insect tables with the most effective management options listed first. Throughout the guide, the effectiveness ratings are abbreviated E for excellent, VG for very good, G for good, F for fair, and P for poor. A few other abbreviations are used throughout the guide when describing pesticide efficacy. A complete explanation of these ratings is provided at the beginning of the guide. As a reminder, specific rates, application methods, and sometimes target pests vary on product labels containing the same active ingredient and are subject to change at any time. Always refer to and read the pesticide label on the product before making any application. The label is the law. In addition to the main tables, the Strawberry IPM Guide also includes seasonal at-a-glance disease and arthropod guides. Summary tables on the efficacy of various chemicals for disease and insect management are also provided following the main disease and insect tables. Throughout the guide, descriptions of various diseases, insects, and weeds, and when these pests may become problematic, are included. Resistance development can also be a major issue, particularly with the pathogens that cause anthracnose and botrytis fruit rot. As such, several pages are devoted to resistance management, 
and are referenced regularly throughout the disease management sections. These pages provide valuable information to assist with fungicide selection for these diseases throughout the season and provide options for fungicide spray programs when resistance to certain fungicide groups is known. The Strawberry IPM Guide also includes information to assist growers in making decisions for pre-planting activities. Expanded information is provided for nematode management, fumigants, and pre-plant dips, as well as other practices that are currently being researched. New additions for 2021 and wrapping up the guide are photo pages that include color photos of some of the target diseases, insects, and weeds described in the guide. The Strawberry IPM Guide is a valuable resource for anyone involved in commercial strawberry production in the Southeast, and it continues to improve each year as content is added and updated. Make it a priority to visit the Southern Region Small Fruit Consortium website each year to obtain the current edition. If you have any questions about the guide, please reach out to your local county extension agent or specialist. You may also, con you may also contact me by phone or email. Thank you for your attention.